Hey, hey. Have you seen the new The Minimalist movie? I think it's called Less Is Now. And it was released on New Year's Day. So perfect timing, I guess, because hey, New Year's resolutions. Uh, we all need to declutter, right? And yes, I've seen it. So I just want to share my perspective on this film as a minimalist. And yeah, okay, let's go. First of all, I did not really know about The Minimalists. Uh, Joshua Fields, Milburn and Ryan Nicodemus, that's their names. I had never heard those names before 2020 because that was when I discovered the hashtag Min's Game. Now, Min's Game is a hashtag on Instagram that was obviously invented by the minimalists, those, those two guys behind me there. And um, well, it's supposed to be some sort of community hashtag. And that was my first interaction with their content because I, I first thought, what is that? That's a, that's a weird hashtag. So I dug around a little on Instagram and found a lot of uh, Korean minimalists actually <laughs> that shared their, uh, their progress in decluttering. And then I came onto the minimalist website and found their podcast and was like, okay, I guess it's a famous minimalism podcast. But... Little did I know, <laughs> this is like the most popular minimalism podcast, I think. And I, I must confess, I don't listen to podcasts. I mean, rarely ever. And if I do, it's um, science or business podcasts. So lifestyle is not something that I am usually interested in. But I get that podcasts have huge communities and they can motivate a lot of people. So I think podcasts are a nice thing. And probably if you're on the bus, if you, if you want to listen to something and just block out all the noise from all the people and all the bad things that there are in the world. Yeah, I guess podcasts are nice. So I watched a few of those on YouTube and I think, um, yeah, that's, that's interesting um, for people who are new to minimalism, but I soon found that it's not really interesting to me because I've been doing this for such a long time and it really doesn't do anything for me to consume minimalism content. I'm more into following people than topics. And I also like that about the minimalist channels that I subscribe to. There are a few, but I like it more if it is about the person than about just how to do minimalism or how to do simple living. Um, for instance, there's this Swedish YouTuber, his name is Kalle Flodin, and he is a really cool YouTuber who shares his life in a cabin in the northern wilderness of Sweden. Or there is Jonna Jinton, she is also a Swedish YouTuber and basically has a, a very similar topic. Oh, why do we always pick people from Sweden? And there is also Benita Larsson, I don't know if you know her, she is also a minimalist and she also lives in Sweden. Um, anyway, those are the three that, they, that come to mind when I think of simple living and minimalism and beautiful, interesting videos and topics because I'm more about um, following these people because I want to know what is going on in their lives and what uh, is their unique perspective on their way of living. And also as a minimalist who has done this for a long time, I want to kind of broaden my horizon whenever I watch some video. And I don't want to hear the stuff that I say in my own videos or that I, I don't know, uh, <laughs> I already live, you know, I, I'm already living this way of life. So it would be kind of redundant. That being said, I know when I watch this movie, I'm not going to be swept off my feet and I don't expect that. But I still think it's not a very good movie. In fact, I was kind of bored out of my mind watching this and I don't really even know where to start with explaining where my boredom came from or my being annoyed with this movie. First of all, I think it's nice to emphasize your uh, message with a personal story and to talk about your hardships in life and where you came from. And that is a good thing. That is something that I like and appreciate in YouTubers. But the whole way those two shared their stories, 
was a little bit too cheesy for me, to be honest. And they kind of make fun of that in their podcast as well. In their podcast, they say that they are cheesy and that they are cheesy guys. And they make fun of how they were fat kids. And they literally say we were the two fattest kids in in uh, school. So that is how we became friends. And that's cute. You know, that is like... Yeah, there are a few authentic snippets in that movie, but uh, the vast majority of the film is cringy. I can't even put a finger on it. It's just like a general feeling. Like after watching this movie, I, I feel weird. <laughs> Let's just go through the movie maybe like step by step. I think in the beginning, there are a few people that are that function like ornaments to the core story. <laughs> And they are uh, like talking about the problems of consumerism, how um, it puts a lot of people in debt, and that is of course not good. And it is, I think it is a very American approach. And it is this kind of consumerism and this kind of credit card system, bills piling up, that kind of thing. For you, for a European, from my standpoint, um, please don't be offended, but for a European, person that is sounds very American because that is something that you see in every uh, show that comes from the US. So that is some something that um, we Europeans I think um, associate with America. Coca-Cola and credit card debt. So those two things and, and uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. So also I am from the capital of drinking Munich like we behave like we in invented beer and we're so proud of it i mean i'm not when i'm in the subway and there's oktoberfest it's not my happy place anyway what i wanted to say is that this movie seems to be very relatable for people from the u.s maybe maybe you can shed some light on that if you come from the u.s and you think like yeah i can relate to that i have seen the movie and for me this is a lot uh, like what I've seen uh, with my friends and family. I know a lot of people who have issues like that and this is really a problem over here. Because I think in Europe we also have these problems but we don't talk about it like that publicly and not, not that much, not that, um, it's not that present. Anyway, that is kind of how the movie starts and they talk about these issues, uh, societal issues and um, money problems and where they both came from like from poorer families um, middle-class families I don't know I don't remember it all in detail but um, yeah I, I remember that Joshua Fields Milburn kind of talked a lot about his mom and how she drank and she got sick and she died of cancer and that was really sad but it also sounded a little bit like he was blaming a lot of stuff on his mom and I'm not sure if, if that was the intention like He's saying stuff like, yeah, she wasn't a bad mom. But right before, he kind of describes her as this pill-taking, drinking addict. Maybe this is something like, yeah, she, she was a good person, but a bad mom. Anyway, I find it weird to expose your parents like that. And for me, this would be too sensitive. I just don't think it's a great topic to talk about to motivate minimalism. But I guess I guess I, I understand where this is coming from. Anyway, this is how the movie starts. And he just starts talking about his mother and that he uses to motivate his way to minimalism over his corporate job and uh, the ideal of making money to be better off than his mom, I guess. And uh, the other guy, uh, Ryan, he also talks about um, issues like that, like... Um, wanting to have more money to make a living and and basically have a good life. And then what is interesting and what is very relatable, I think, is that they come to the point, both of them come to the point that they say, well, we accumulated all this money and all this stuff, but we still didn't find happiness. So what should we do to be happier? What is life about? And that is essentially what minimalism is. And I totally agree with that message that essentially when you find out you don't need all that stuff and you reduce your belongings to a smaller number of things that essentially you become a more happy person. So I totally agree with that. That is uh, the message of minimalism, I think. And yeah, that part, I think they got, 
they got it figured out pretty well. But to me, it is still weird to see how well monetized all of this is. Just to be clear, there is nothing wrong with making money with minimalism or making your passion, your business and anything like that. I totally um, am fine with everyone else who's making a lot of money with the simple topics such as minimalism. I think you can, you can make money with everything online today, but at some point it gets a little bit simple and repetitive, a little bit too simple and too repetitive for my taste. I must admit though that I think a lot of people who have never heard of minimalism might be well off with this movie because if you watch this movie like a complete beginner, you have never watched anything about minimalism, then it might be a good introduction. But it kind of also is a giant ad for the minimalists and their books and their products and their podcasts and so on. Because this movie is essentially about them. I do not think that this movie is about minimalism. It's about them and their expertise on minimalism. It's about them talking about minimalism. It's about them and their story with minimalism. But it's not a movie about minimalism. If it was, a lot of people would talk about this topic and it would be a broad variety of voices and opinions, but it isn't. It is just a movie about the minimalists. And that's fine if you just call it the minimalist movie, but it's called Less Is Now and it kind of starts off as this documentary style movie, but then it slowly moves into this personal story thing and I don't really get what the point is of this movie other than hey minimalism changed our life it might change your life too minimalism is cool buy our book uh, yeah but you can say that in like five minutes you don't need 50 minutes for that so still kind of a fancy ad for me and i wouldn't recommend watching it unless you really have nothing nothing better to do However, I do not want to criticize their perspective of minimalism or um, question their story or anything like that. That is not what I want to say. By no means do I want to say that. But if I were to make a movie about minimalism and yeah, to, to motivate people to declutter stuff and to help them out and to really make a documentary, um, that would not be what I do. And if I want to watch a movie about minimalism, that movie would not be what, I, what I'd expect. I think that pretty much sums it up what I find weird about this movie and there are also a few other things that you could yeah uh, cringe upon like for instance they are going back in time um, and showing their life in their corporate job and to illustrate their lives in their corporate jobs they kind of get these other hairstyles like uh, Ryan gets his hair oh, like this <laughs> And uh, then he sits in his cubicle, or I think, was that, the, uh, what was that Joshua? I don't know, I'm sorry, I don't remember exactly. But this was pretty weird because they kind of played their own life, how it was a few years back. And it was just cringy to watch. Like, I don't know, if, if I were to tell you a story about what I did a few years back, maybe I would show you some pictures or some real footage but I wouldn't become the actor of my own movie. That is just weird. I don't know, like in the past tense, right? No, <laughs> no, that was just cringy. Anyway, um, that is a style, you know, you might like this kind of style. I do not, I think it's weird. I don't, that's not what I expect in documentary. Anyway, question, should you watch this movie? Um, if you have been into minimalism for quite some time and you want to get upset about a weird movie, then yeah, watch it just for fun. If you just want to watch a movie with someone else and show them what minimalism is about, no, don't watch it. It doesn't really show what minimalism is about. I think there are better movies and I think they made another movie before that one, which uh, had also better critiques, I guess. But there are a lot of movies about minimalism. There are a lot of great YouTube channels that explain what minimalism is really about, why it makes you happier, why it makes your life better, essentially. So I think before I would recommend that movie 
were paying for it, I would recommend all the free content that is out there, all the free podcasts, uh, which you just have to watch a few ads for. Speaking of ads, I kind of don't like the way um, the minimalists shit on ads. Like ads are a bad thing and we hate ads, ads are so annoying and stupid. I don't know, I've heard that quite a few times in the podcast that they mention that they are ad free. But essentially they really aren't because their podcast is a giant ad for themselves. And yeah, that's okay. If it is in itself, you know, like if you just make good content and people want to watch your stuff and want to buy your merch because they like you, that is okay. You're your own ad where you walk and talk on the internet, wherever you go, you are your own ad. But more passively usually and they do it in a very active way, uh, promoting their book and everything, promoting their podcast, um, promoting their merch. I don't know. I feel that they do that in a kind of aggressive way. So it is kind of ironic that they criticize ads as a whole. I mean, at some point, uh, by the way, I'm going to put ads in my videos because money does not stink. You can do a lot of good things with money and you don't have to click the ads and you don't have to watch them if you don't want to. So I don't know. I don't hate ads. What do you think? Do you hate ads? Did you watch the minimalist movie Less Is Now? Did you like it? Um, let's have a discussion, you know, in the comments. Let's have a discussion about this and talk about whether or not you think this is a good movie or this is an annoying movie. At this point, it has probably become obvious that I didn't really like the movie. But that doesn't mean you can't like it. So let me know because um, I'm interested in your opinions. And so that's it.